Okay, so we talked in our last video about how to tell toxic behavior from annoying behavior or mistakes. So let's say you do one of these tests and find out the person is toxic. <laughs> it is a red flag. They weren't able to apologize for the behavior or they continue to uh, engage in the annoying or upsetting behavior despite you telling them or letting them know otherwise. Then it's a red flag. Now what? Well, keep in mind, someone can only be toxic to you if you allow it. So what are the ways you can not allow this, right? So we talk about boundaries a lot. Um, so boundaries is one that can be verbal or physical. So a verbal boundary would be saying something along the lines of, nope, as I said, that's off limits. So something quick. I always recommend putting up a hand and keeping it personal. Oh, I, I let you know that's not work for me or that doesn't work for me or this doesn't work for me. Something simple and easy like that and change the topic. Two, it can be a physical boundary. Spend less time with the person. This seems obvious, but so many people I just feel guilty about doing that. But there's nothing wrong, it's totally socially acceptable to not accept all invitations from these people. Um, do not invite them to your home or your events, especially if they're long. Keep the visits short, sweet, and the next clue, is the setting. What is the setting you're seeing these people? A lot of toxic people do better in public settings because they somehow know or on some level know that their behavior is toxic and if other people are watching, they're gonna behave themselves better. So the third way of keeping the toxicity at bay is to choose a setting that's public. So maybe that's the only place you'll ever see them. Restaurants, parks, other people's homes, like large parties, large gatherings where other people, especially non-family members are, okay? So there are three ways to deal with toxic family members. Remember also that have this discussion about what limits you're going to set, what kind of boundaries you're going to set with your significant other beforehand. It really helps if you have somebody who's on board. A lot of people will set boundaries and be furious that the significant other didn't know what was going on when the significant other could just not know what's going on. It doesn't mean they don't approve of what's going on. So if you have a, a way out or um, need to say no for, to something for some particular reason or have a saying, uh, an agreed upon saying of how to stop some toxic behavior, and you've had that discussion with your significant other, they can back you up and let them know how they can back you up. <laughs> some people want their significant other to back them up by saying nothing, just being kind of a strong, silent type <laughs> and let you do it. Other people want the person to come stand beside them and nod their head while you're saying you're putting up your boundary. Um, or other people want them to give them a message, something along the lines of if you're drowning in this and aren't able to do it, to take your hand and say, let's go, we're gonna go um, off to take a walk or something along those lines. So let your significant other in on this, let them help you. Um, this is how to keep the toxicity from affecting you.